Good morning, and welcome to the Bad Apple Report. It's 7.30 a.m., bright and early right here at home on the range. Thank you so much for being here today, folks. I really do appreciate it. And We have a big update on the Karen Reed murder trial. She has been found nothing, okay? It's a hung jury. And so what that means, as you know, is it's over for now, except for for this trooper. It's only kind of over for now for him. 10 weeks and 74 witnesses and no closure for those involved. Massachusetts State Police Trooper Michael Proctor has been relieved of his duties. Now, he was the lead investigator in this case, and most notably in this trial, he testified to some lewd and offensive text messages he sent about Karen Reed over the course of dealing with this case and investigating it. Now, I want to explain exactly what this means. Relieved of his duties does not mean that he has been fired. He has not been terminated. Rather, Right now, he is not actively working as a trooper, though he is technically still a trooper. He has been moved out of the district attorney's office detective unit, and he has an upcoming disciplinary hearing where there's a variety of options of results that can come from that. Now, this news about Trooper Michael Proctor being relieved from his duties came with a statement that says, in part, from the colonel, our focus remains on delivering the highest level of police services with professionalism and integrity. This statement coming to us just hours after a mistrial. The Norfolk County District Attorney's Office releasing this statement immediately after, saying we thank the O'Keefe family for their commitment and dedication to this long process. They maintained sight of the true core of this case to find justice for John O'Keefe, saying the Commonwealth intends to retry this case. The Commonwealth did their worst. Guess what? They failed. They failed miserably and they'll continue to fail. Karen Reed and her lawyers hugged we her often family. Hear how departments don't have enough crisis intervention personnel. Well, they're changing that. They're adding crisis intervention personnel all across the nation. But what I fear is that they're not intervening where they are most needed. And that's to get between the rabid, brutal animal cop and the patient. That's the intervention that's needed. 11 law enforcement agents and one mental health provider graduated from the East Mississippi Crisis Intervention Team's basic training. This training focuses on assisting people who struggle with mental health issues, allowing officers to be prepared for any situation. A lot of lecture on mental health topics. Uh, we call it Mental Health 101. Uh, site visits where they were able to sit down and actually talk with the clients who were under therapy, under medication, as they're going through the process of recovery, uh, to to learn what they've been through and how the officers can help them based on the advice received from them. And then uh, ver verbal de-escalation uh, lectures followed up by a bunch of role play. This extensive training took over 40 hours to complete, but after the intense course, the graduates are grateful for what they've learned extremely appreciative because it, it kind of puts you in a frame of mind that you know I now have the tools if needed to help someone that needs help. Now we finally finally finished uh, we had a lot of role playing and the role playing is kind of it's, it's, it's very intense it kind of puts you in the moment but it's good training. According to Mental Health America over 20 percent of adults suffer from mental health issues making this type of training very important for deputies and officers out in the field. Nearly every day we're dealing with someone out there who is in some kind of mental health crisis. So with that in mind, it's not always that someone has to be taken for an assessment or have a committal hearing. Many times it's a matter of uh, helping them to uh, take their meds if they haven't had them or to uh, uh, have our partners, in our case WEAMS, their mobile crisis team to come out uh, to get an appointment with their therapist. There are a lot of other things that we can do that will help to uh, help that person without actually having to take them into custody for any kind of evaluation. Faced by Utica police officers, horrified neighbors watch as an officer throws him to the ground. Then... Oh my God! Yo, he just, he just shot him! If you have a bias against the police, you're probably not going to change your mind. But if you're open-minded, um, then hopefully all the videos will give you a different perspective. An officer's deadly shooting of a 13-year-old in Utica is bringing together local and national protesters.
But the rawest outrage comes from the teen's brother. That's killing me that my brother is not here with me and my family. The family, which immigrated from Southeast Asia, knows a different side of the teen than the one depicted in footage shared by police 24 hours after the shooting. And one of the reasons why we stopped these individuals was armed robbery. Can I just pat you down and make sure you got no weapons on you? About to be checked for weapons, Mue takes off. The three officers involved in the chase, including the one who fired, are still on administrative leave and might be for the many months the attorney general's investigation might take. The police chief says he's worried for their physical safety and emotional well-being. We have a lot of bad apples to get to today, but I only had time to get out this short report this morning. So thank you for being here. As always, I really do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. And I'll see you later today with some more bad apples.